um, if you look at the at the course outline, we are supposed to cover trying to open the course outline. You can also open yours in the Google Classroom, is there? then so, cross up line as a cross up line cross up line did you find the cross up line so, why we'll put it we'll put it in Why is the cross outline not here? Send. Wait a second. So if you look at the course outline, I'm sharing, you can also open in the in your Google Classroom. Here are the things that we need to cover. Number one is the concept of Khalifa, relationship with creator, human being and alam, insan sejahtera, IAM, QE vision and mission, uh, and Makosik Syariah. Okay. Right. So... So that's we're going to what we're going to do today. Uh, and and uh, I I understand uh, you need to do the proposal, which should include everything here. So if you haven't covered, you can just read uh, from the internet. There are many videos that you can learn uh, while doing the proposal and the project. Uh, can you see? Oh, haven't shared. Have I shared my screen? No. Okay. Can you see? Do you see my PowerPoint now? Yes, I do. Okay. So, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, you know the 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 course are being um, designed such that we we understand our role uh, in this earth. Okay. The number one rule uh, uh, role role that we that you know um, the 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 basic questions that we should ask ourselves is why Allah has created us. Okay, that is a very basic question that all of you should ask yourself. Why Allah created uh, Mutakim, Zulhafiz, Bashir? Why Allah created you? Why Allah created us as a human being? Why Allah doesn't create, it, uh, create us like uh, to be a bird or a rock uh, or a building? So Allah can create, Allah is ever powerful and Allah can do anything. But in the end, Allah has created us and make us into human being. And why? So, and this is a very basic question that we should ask so that we know the purpose of why we are here, why, why you are alive. Sometimes, you know, when people uh, know uh, what you call it, um, being too depressed, uh, like they are suicide, suicidal, thinking of that, uh, maybe we should think of going back to why we are here are we here to be happy does allah created here to be you know having a luxury life be happy is that why allah created us or does allah create us here to you know uh, to 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 be in misery all the time i mean or, or in trouble all the time is that why allah created us so if you understand the fundamental you know the reason of why allah created us in this world 
then we can see the world in the uh, in the eyes. This is the Islamic worldview, the worldview that Allah wants us to see. Okay, so uh, for example, uh, for example. Uh, when we understand, uh, so for example, when I ask you the question, are we, are we, uh, has Allah created you to have fun in this world? If yes, uh, if, if yes, if Allah created the human being to have fun, to be have luxury, happy all the time, then why Allah make the Prophet Muhammad wasallam the best of creation, which is Allah's, you know, uh, uh, the Habibullah, which Allah loves so much. To be in in a pain, you know, uh, Rasulullah SAW had to go through a uh, war in order to bring Islam to us. So he had suffered a lot of injury, uh, even you know we, there's arrow going into the, his face, right? So so this is the one that Allah beloved. There's not nobody in this entire world that Allah loves more than the Prophet. That the Prophet Muhammad SAW had to go through that. So. Does that mean that uh, the Prophet doesn't fulfill the purpose of his life? That, uh, you know, so, so it means that uh, this life is not for that. There's a bigger mission. So, so if we feel sad, if we feel that we don't have everything that everybody has, right? It means nothing, it is, it's not important, okay? Uh, because as long as we fulfill why Allah created us. And there are two reasons that why Allah created us. Can anybody share why Allah created us? There are two reasons. Let's have some discussion this evening so that you won't sleep. Uh, yes, teacher. Hmm? Uh, yeah. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Okay, good. So, to worship Allah. Good. So number one is to worship Allah. So uh, there's no other reason, you know, there's no other reason. There's no other purpose why you and he me here except for to worship Allah. So we need to understand what worship means. Does it mean that we have to be like the monk in the in the temple, just stay oh, you know, just pray all the time, don't do anything else? Is that what worship means? Or what does it mean? So if you know there's objective, like we, you, your project have objective. Our life also have a project objective. So we need to fulfill this objective in order for us to pass this life. Okay. So in the end, we we get a good grades in uh, in front of Allah. So so number one objective is to uh, worship. Illa uh, liyabudun. There's no other than to worship Allah. So when say worship, what what do we understand about worship? Anybody? Um, to perform ibadah. Okay. Can you give example of ibadah? Pray five times a day. Pray five, praying five times a day. Good. What else? Hmm? Taking care of your family. Taking care of your family. Okay, good. What else? Hmm. Uh, fasting. Fasting in Ramadan. What else? Seeking Perform knowledge. Hash. Seeking knowledge. Yes, ibadah. What else? Amira, Rukman. Amira, what else? Zakat. Zakat. Okay. Okay, brothers and sisters. How how do we define ibadah worship, right? So as mentioned, every, everything that you mentioned just now uh, is ibadah, our uh, ibadah, including seeking knowledge. So let me ask you, being an engineer, is it an ibadah or no? Working as an engineer? Yes or no? Yes. 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 Why yes. is it a yes? Why is it a yes? Why? Because we, we can benefit the ummah with the, our knowledge and our, our learning. Okay. So if you become an engineer, but you take bribery, is that ibadah 
consider Ibadah your work? Yeah, also, that, because that helped me to, to live Bri my life. Bribery. You know what bribery means? Let me check. Okay, please check first. So, uh, huh? Is I it? think, I huh? think uh, it's Ibadah if we do something in the name of Allah. Maybe uh, yeah, if we, we say our thing, uh, we do engineering and we say, uh, say it is for the name of Allah, then it is an ibadah. Anything that related for the name of Allah is ibadah. Oh, anything. Okay. Iqbal is saying anything related to uh, doing it for the sake of Allah is considered ibadah. Huh? Okay. Let me give you an example. So if I'm like Robin Hood, you know, you know Robin Hood, right? So yeah. Robin Hood, they, he steals for the, for the poor. And I do it for the sake of Allah. Is it is it an ibadah or no? Oh, well, it's uh, because it is wrong because it's opposing to our Islamic rules. So we cannot steal. But you say you say everything just now. Uh, could could everything <laughs> everything that is follow the guideline? Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Okay, there are two main condition for it to be an ibadah, right? Everything, you know, brothers and sisters, our life should be an ibadah. The why you are coming to the our this genie class is also in ibadah. It will be an ibadah only and only if you fulfill two main uh, condition or criteria. Okay, so it will not be an ibadah even if you pray five times a day, but you don't fulfill these two uh, the these two condition, it will not be an ibadah. Okay, so we need to be very clear. Even if you play with your own, if you are married, right? You play with your husband or play, you play with your wife, you play with your children, it will still be ibadah if you fulfill these two. So everything in our life, including eating, playing with your friends, go to the, go to the shopping mall, everything will be an ibadah if it, it covers these two main conditions. Number one is what mentioned by Iqbal just now is you do it for the sake of Allah, the intention. Okay, the intention. Why are you doing it? That's why I'm saying if you pray five times a day, but your intention is you you are afraid that your mother will scold you. If you do pray five times a day, it's not an ibadah. Although you people can see you actually praying, but it's not an ibadah. It's not considered an ibadah. Okay, so so it must be for the sake of Allah and Allah alone. Number two, the second condition for it to be an ibadah is it means it must be within the sharia of Islam. This is what the, the, the clause. So it cannot be like Robin Hood. It must be within the sharia. So everything that within the sharia that Islam allows for you to do, include eating, Islam allows you to eat, it can be an ibadah. Okay. So, uh, so these are the two main criteria. So studying, you can be an engineer and your engineering work is an ibadah if you do it for the sake of Allah and you uh, you you are not doing anything haram while you're doing uh, you're working as an engineer and you now you are all a student right if you die have you ever thought that you will ever die during uh, while while doing your degree have you ever thought about that no madam i'm very, i'm young i have a, a long way ahead of me i never think of death Mm. Brothers and sisters, you know, uh, death can uh, can hit anybody uh, anytime. Uh, and we know that. And we don't even know, Allah says, we don't know we, we, when we will die. And we don't even know which land we will die. Maybe, for example, you are in Malaysia. One day, one day you, go, you want to go to Russia, for example, but you transit in a country and you die there. You never know. You never know where, even where. You will die, right? Also, madam, I will never go out of Malaysia. I will die in Malaysia. You never know. Never say never, right? So, um, uh, what I was saying. Uh, so, so uh, going to why I'm talking about this. Uh, uh, I'm talking about uh, ibadah. So, going back to ibadah. So, it means that uh, we need to fulfill these two criteria. So, even if you're studying here, if you're doing for the sake of Allah, you will get reward. If you're doing for just for the sake of degree, right? I just want to get a degree, madam. I just want a certificate. Then fine. You will get the certificate, but you will not get it, the reward from Allah in the hereafter. So very 
uh, what's rugi rugi apa in inggris ah what's in english rugi waste loss waste. loss okay thank you loss or waste it's a it's a real loss why don't you have to why don't you change your your intention so that in the hereafter you also get it but let me give an example right so so you and uh, you're doing engineering you're studying very good so you're doing it for the sake of allah then you cheated okay then you cheated does studying become an ibadah anymore or no 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 your 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 degree will not be an ibadah and you get you is haram and you will be you be sin you you have you will get sin and you'll be judged on the day of judgment even if you are like in in now you don't get caught nowadays it's online right very easy to cheat very easy to cheat you think allah doesn't uh, allah can uh, it doesn't see you although the lecturer doesn't see you right but allah is always watching and even if you if you are loose uh, let loose in this is this dunya be careful you know in the day of judgment the lecturer will find you and allah will say this student has cheated take everything uh, the uh, you know the reward the ajar from him and he will be bankrupt do you want that in the day of judgment so it's not worth it brothers and sisters uh, if you cheat okay this is a reminder for all of you including me not worth it to cheat because you'll be you'll be you'll be you you will be punished if not in this dunya but akhirah so going back so this the why allah created you and me to worship every single second in our life should be a worship of Allah. So whenever you want to do something, think about what what the the things that you're going to do. Is it a worship or no? For example, you're playing games. Is it a worship of Allah or no? Are you wasting your time? Plus the games, you know, I don't know computer games or mobile games or ever games. Uh, they are what you call it. Um, uh, what's the word? What's the word? Uh, you know, they are. Um, components or elements which are not good you can see the dressing of the you know figures in the in the games are not good why are, why are you still playing it do you know games is actually a, like a, a tool a war tool it's a soft what do you call it um, a soft war so that all of us will not think about the serious things we'll be lost in the game and nobody cares what happens in the world anymore if you are too engrossed in your games, right? Who cares about the, you know, our Syrian sister who being raped over there? Who cares about the Palestinian there who are dying? Who cares about, you know, many uh, Yamani who doesn't have food? Who cares? We just, we just care about our, playing our games, right? So this, so that, that is a distraction, and that is not why Allah created you and me. We have a bigger purpose uh, to worship Allah, and also, uh, also part of being worshiping Allah is also to be a Khalifa. Okay, so I go back to my my screen here. So part of worshiping Allah is why Allah created us in this world, the human being, is to become a Khalifa. Which can somebody please recite this ayah? Anybody? Bismillah. You cannot read Quran? You can read, madam. Okay, can you please read it? وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةِ قَالُوا وَتَجْعَلُ فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُ الدِّمَاءَ وَنَحْنُ نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكَ قَالَ إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Okay, thank you Brother Hamza. So, uh, so this uh, uh, an ayah in the Quran where Allah says the meaning here and mention, O Muhammad, when your Lord said to the angel, so this happens, you know, uh, before, you know, before we are here is in the in in the uh, up there said to the angels indeed i will make upon an uh, upon the earth a successive authority which is khalifa ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa allah will make put in this world this earth khalifa which is earth and the angel said 
Will you place upon it one who causes corruption therein and sheds blood? While we declare your praise and sanctify you? Because the angels at that time knows that, you know, uh, when a human beings are not like angels. Human beings can make decisions. Human beings have uh, nafs, you know, other how we nafsu. We, 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 we like, we, we have inclination. We can choose what we want to do. So some of us can be greedy. Some of us can have, uh, you know, uh, jealousy. So so the, prof, uh, the the angel said, so you want to put on earth somebody who will corrupt. So this is like known nature. Uh, corruption and shed blood will be killing each other. While we declare your praise and sanctify you, while the, the angels do nothing except for, you know, praising Allah and, you know, um, and give hamd you know, uh, praising Allah and do subhanallah to Allah. And then Allah said, indeed, I know that which you do not know. Okay. So, so this is a conversation with the, between Allah and the angels. So the angels are worried. Why Allah want to put uh, in, hum, in the earth this creation, human being, to be a khalifa. And khalifa is actually a very big responsibility. So uh, Allah created human beings as servants at the same time to honor the human being as the khalifa with responsibilities. So whether you like it or not, and brothers and sisters, whether you like it or not, you are a khalifa. Whether you like it or not, you want it or not, you, you want to think about it or not, on your shoulder is the responsibility of a khalifa. So we need to know what is our responsibility in this world. Because Allah, when you have responsibility, Allah will ask you on the day of, of judgment. What have you done with your responsibility given to you, right? So, um, and and when Allah says, uh, indeed, I know that which you do not know, Allah knows our capacity and capability. Allah knows that we can do good and we can be uh, nurtured, you know, uh, be taught to become good. So, so Khalifa, uh, and then, and the second ayah is uh, showing that Allah himself is teaching the prophet Adam and, and also is, which is our, our father and our, the creation of human being. Can somebody else recite this ayah, please? Anybody? Yes, madam. Okay, please read it. وعلم آدم الأسماء كلها ثم عرضهم على الملائكة فقال أنبئوني بأسماء هؤلاء إن كنتم صادقين okay, Thank you brother Oops. Uh, and uh, Allah said in the Quran uh, which means and he, thought, and he taught Adam the names of all of them وعلم آدم الأسماء كلها then then he showed them to the angels and said, inform me of the names of these if you are truthful. In uh, kuntum interesting. So, so in this ayah, uh, the so in the uh, after after because human beings are known to you know have this jealousy, greed. We can do many bad things, but in the end, Allah Himself give the uh, thought Adam. Uh, uh, Adam on the names of all of them. Names including, you know, when you say names, asma akullaha, names of everything in this world. Okay. And also, not only names, and it was in the tafsir, it's also the characteristics means that, you know, uh, a wait a second. How do I, I will call this later. So, uh, names uh, means that even the characteristics, for example, rock. What can we do with a rock? What is the what is the nature of a rock? And and also, you know, um, for example, woods. What can we use with the wood? So this is all knowledge that the angels doesn't have. This knowledge are given to human beings. So why why this knowledge is important? And for example. Uh, to uh, what is iron? What can we do with an iron uh, to make buildings, for example? Or, for example, if you are electronics engineer, right? Semiconductor. What is semiconductor and how to use it? This is all knowledge from Allah that being taught. So that why? So that we can govern the earth. 
so that we can become the khalifa in this world. Allah doesn't let us become a khalifa without preparing us. Allah give us the knowledge. So now, this to Adam. For us now, we have to go and seek knowledge so that we can become the the right khalifa, the good khalifa that Allah wants. The knowledge is all around us. So that's why you, brothers and sisters, are being chosen to become a khalifa in the engineering world. So we need to get as much knowledge. So you, you cannot just play around with the courses that you take, say, I don't care, lah. I just want to pass. No, you should learn for the sake of the knowledge so that you understand the knowledge and can use it in your life to become a khalifa, a good khalifa. Okay. Right. What is this? Uh, okay, there's a hadith um, where Allah said, O sons of Adam, busy yourself in worshipping me and I will fill your chest, chest, uh, your, your sudur, your, 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 your dada. Uh. I will fill your chest with riches and dissipate your poverty. Otherwise, I will fill your chest with distracting affairs. I will not do away with your poverty. Um, you know, uh, from this hadith, it's clear, you know, why if you fulfill our purpose of life, which is to worship Allah, uh, you know, Allah will, Allah will put your heart, you know, your, your chest, your, your, your heart eh, will, be, will be rich. You don't feel that you are nobody. You don't feel that you have low self-esteem. You don't feel that you are uh, lacking of anything. Allah will feel it if you worship Allah. If you fulfill the purpose of life, you, you don't feel bad. You feel your heart will always feel rich. You know, you understand rich. Rich means content even more. And then Allah will get rid of your poverty. So you don't you won't be fakir. No, so you know you don't be fucking miskin, sangat. you don't be very poor because why you because you are busy yourself in worshipping Allah. But if you fill your chest, you know, our when we do anything, it will fill our chest. If we talk to our friend gossiping, you know, uh, doing riba, you know, mengumpat, it will fill your chest uh, with, with sin, right? When when you your when your heart is filled with sin. You won't, your heart will not be, uh, you know, uh, tranquil. You will, your heart will not be happy. You will always not be happy. Why, madam? I do everything. I'm not happy. Because your your heart is already dark, full of sin. So what you need to do, you need to clean it. So that in the end, you'll be happy with your life. So one way of doing it is to, to busy yourself. You know, when I say busy, when the prophet say busy, means every single second of ourselves should be busy. But busy doing what? worshipping Allah in many ways. So the two things that should worship Allah, number one, anything you do for the sake of Allah, and number two is within Sharia. If you do you do these two things properly, it be worshipping of Allah. But if you fulfill your, your chest with distracting affairs, things that are not relevant to you, for example, you busy watching, I don't know, watching a movie three, four hours, you know, uh, a day. Or you playing games two hours, one hour a day. Why do you do that? You distracting affairs, something like that, and you your chest will be you know you will no longer focus on what what are important things in life, and then will not do away with poverty. And then one day you become poor, poor in many sense, poor in in your what in your life, in how you bring yourself, poor in your thinking, poor in your heart, poor in everything. So. Brothers and sisters, I just want to reiterate here, as long as we fulfill why Allah created us, Allah will make your life easy and get rid of your problems. Uh, just we need to think of whether our life now, is it worshipping Allah or no? Are you, say, madam, I'm studying engineering, I'm worshipping. Maybe if your intention is right. If your intention is just for dunya, you are not worshipping Allah. Okay, so... Just change your intention a bit so that your your heart, you're doing it for the sake of Allah. You do your exam, you do your project. For now, we have project engineer, right? You can you can just do it to pass this course or you're doing it for the sake of Allah. And if you're doing it for the sake of Allah, can you do... Um, in Malay, we say lebih kurang. What's in English? Huh? 
uh, if you are doing something for yes anybody wants to help me minimum minimum uh, yes minimum minimum maybe minimum is the uh, so if you do if you do anything for the one for the king you know for the king uh, of malaysia or for the for you call it for this is the king of the universe do you want to give something very low minimum or you give the best that you can you know so that is the concept of worship when you worship allah the king of the universe you don't give second rated you give always give your best so the same as doing project or you know uh, this project the, uh, your exam if you doing it for the sake of allah you will do your extreme best okay um so istikhlah means uh, does it should be bound by all the rules of acts of worship in islam especially that pertaining to maslaha and mafsada so uh, in life you need to always weigh Okay, can you hear me? In life, you need to always weigh whether it's have maslaha and mafsada, benefit or harm. Sometimes, one thing can have both benefit and harm. Okay, for example, uh, you, I, you can think of an example, anything in life, you have benefit and harm. So you need to find always the benefit. You should do something benefit more, uh, should be should be, uh, what do you call it, uh, more in weightage compared to the harm. For example, madam, I, I play games, I have benefit. I play games, I release my stress. Okay, what's the harm? So is there any harm? No harm. Are you sure no harm? You are wasting your time, you're wasting your life. And then uh, you will also see scene or, you know, pictures which are not uh, Islamic there. It will already dirty your heart. So, and then when your heart is dirty, it's more difficult for elm knowledge to enter your heart. So, and then uh, not counting that the other, other, that it will influence your mind. So, you, so everything in life, you need to weigh the benefit and the harm, maslaha and the mafsada. Therefore, human needs ethical conducts in their life so as they can manage the universe successfully pleasing Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it means that you know ethics are very important. Islam has its own ethics as well. Why? So that human can be, can know, can can you know lead their life properly. If you don't have ethics, we just don't care. Maybe, maybe men, I like uh, you know, a, a person, a, a girl will say, I like another girl. I want to marry another girl. I'm a man. I want to marry another man. There's no ethics at all. Right? Nothing to govern. We just think, oh, I feel that like I want to kill this person one day. So you just kill that person. So there's no ethics. Right? So, so we need ethics to, you know, rules uh, to bound us so that we can live in this world in harmony. And especially as, as us Muslim, uh, we want to govern huh? as a khalifa. We need to govern the universe as what Allah wants, pleasing Allah. Okay, any question up to here? Madam? Yes? Uh, in your opinion, uh, what is the difference between like uh, the real ethics that we, we need to do and uh, the rights, like human rights that we need to fulfill? Mm, okay. Because 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 some human rights uh, maybe not in our Sharia, in, not in the range of our Sharia. But how we uh, as different cultural and so. So you mean uh, when say human rights, the United Nations human right, right? Yes. Yes, because Islam also have human rights. We have also human rights, but it's within our uh, Sharia. So. I'm, I think you are talking about human rights, which is the United Nations human rights, and what's uh, you know governed by our Sharia. So as a Muslim, we anything good which is you know uh, in line with our Islam, we follow. Anything which is against, we will not agree forever and ever and ever. You know, I had a discussion with a uh, my just a story, uh, my supervisor when I was in UK. My supervisor is a. Protestant, uh, Protestant. No, he's 
His mother is a Protestant. His father is a Catholic. He he is a mix and he's also agnostic. Agnostic means uh, like atheist a bit. So sometimes he will follow the church. Sometimes not. That's his thinking. Uh. My professor, uh, his name was John. And he, and we, we had a lot of discussion. He likes to talk about Islam with me. Sometimes, you know, we had like four hours straight discussion, not on engineering. So because he's my supervisor, my PhD supervisor on quantum dot laser. But he also, we talk also about, uh, you know, what happens in the world. So uh, he likes to talk about Islam with me. And, you know, he likes to provoke, which I appreciate because uh, otherwise you think that you understand Islam until somebody provokes you. You think you understand Islam, madam, I understand Islam. Okay, wait, for a certain question, I will think, hmm, how does Islam view that? Okay, so so he, so he one of the things I remember, you know, in, in UK, uh, the, the, it's not like Malaysia, the, the night and the day are the same time. In UK, the, in winter, the... Uh, we have a long night and we have a short day. So, um, and then the Fajar, and then in the summer, you will have a the long day and very short night. And sometimes in summer, we have our Fajar prayer at one o'clock or two o'clock in the morning. So, 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 of course, we as a Muslim, we have to pray five times a day, right? Regardless wherever you are in this world. So two o'clock, I will I will wake up and then and then I have a meeting at, with him at at eight. You know, sometimes when I came to the meeting, uh, he's uh, there's somebody in the waiting room. Okay, so sometimes you know uh, I had a meeting in the morning, but a bit sleepy. You know, sleepy because you know I wake up at two and then I had and then it's difficult to sleep again and everything. Then and he he will say to me. Fazlin, why, why are you sleepy? Then I, I said the truth uh, because I, I woke up at one or two to pray. He said, why do you want to wake up at one or two to pray? Why don't you just wake up in the morning? So it's okay. He's telling me, you know, it's okay. You wake up at seven o'clock this morning like normal and then you, you just pray. I'm sure God knows. I'm sure he will, he will, <laughs> he will you know, um, uh, he, he will allow you to, to pray at seven. So that's his thinking. Uh, and, then, and I said, and then I said to, to him, uh, John, uh, no, in Islam, there's a specific time for each. And we have to follow that. And that's the ruling since the Prophet Muhammad and, and will be forever the ruling like that. And you know what he said? He said, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> he said, no, 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 no. I think, it's, this is what he think. Uh, he said, I think Islam will be like the Christian, Christianity, whereby, you know, the, the, religion, the religion changes. Christianity is already 2,000 years old, older than Islam, he said. So with time, the Christianity change, you know, the, the, you know, the rulings. And Islam will also do the same. So he said something like that. Oh, do, we, do we agree or no with him? Of course not. Mm, of course not, right? Of course yeah. not. So it will never change until the end of time. So the same as the ruling of gays, uh, homosexual, bisexual it will be haram haram and haram forever and we believe that so so we will not be like christianity that's why that's why uh, we really need to understand the quran and the sunnah there's the two main uh, things that we need to understand uh, the quran and the sunnah so that we can hold them whatever happens nothing will change so so i do, i i hope that answers nazifa so if it's not in line with our sharia we say no thank you we have our own but anything that in line, say, okay, thank you. Let's work together. Okay. Right. Uh, any more before we proceed? Only like how many slides? Uh, so, okay, let's go. All right. So, I don't know what else. We, okay. Ethics. Huh? So, now we're going to engineering ethics. But what, what is actually ethics? Uh, it's come from the root word ethicos or ethos. Is a branch of knowledge that involves defining, systemizing, defending, and recommending concept of right and wrong conduct of, of actions. So it's something that a knowledge that define or tell us what is right and what is wrong. Okay, in technical meaning, uh, the ethics means the philosophical science that deals with the rightness and wrongness of human actions. So that's why, so for 
ethics for us. So that is basically ethics to tell us uh, what is right and what is wrong in human action, whatever we do. It's not like the, not the animal action. We as a human, what is what what are the ethics? Okay, and even the the Western have ethics, but the problem is their ethics keep on changing. Like I was saying, like the Christianity, they hold, they also have ethics, but even their ethics are changing. So uh, ethics is a moral principle or set of moral values hold by an individual or a group. Okay, that's ethics. So ethics is actually very impor important in life. Even the non-Muslim also, you know, engineering ethics are being learned not only for us in Malaysia, at all, of our, all around the world. All engineers have to go through this course called engineering ethics. But in, in IUM, you are lucky because we have engineering ethics from the Islamic perspective. So we will be learning both from the Western side and also the secular side and from the Islamic side. Um, there are a few terms that which are related to ethics. So if you learn ethics, they are the words that are common. For example, oops, virtues, values, morals, and ethics, right? So ethics covers everything, virtues, values, and moral. Ethics are set of moral values and principles. So in the moral value, you have you also have virtues and values. Virtues are characteristic of an individual which support collective well-being, innate, innate good qualities within people. It expresses a goal that by working at it would lead each individual's perfection. So I will read first. Huh? Values means the foundation of individual's ability to judge between right and wrong. Values inside. Uh, values include a deep-rooted system of an individual belief. While moral are formed out of a person's value and built on right or wrong judgment to form a specific context driven rules. Okay, basically, yeah, brothers and sisters, this all works. You are lucky you don't have final exam that you don't have to memorize this. Okay, uh, so you don't have to memorize this. The most important for you to know what is it. Okay, ethics covers all this. Virtues is the characteristic of an individual, um, like an uh, akhlaq. Virtues are like akhlaq. Values are what inside you, what you believe. So us, we believe that homosexual and uh, homosexual is wrong. That is our individual belief, right? That is values. Moral uh, form of person values and built on right or wrong too. So morals and values are very close together. So, so we can, uh, it becomes what we, what we, morals means whatever we do. From the values, it, uh, it brings out the moral of it. So ethics cover all. So ethics cover all. What is right, what is wrong, what you believe, uh, and what you act upon of your belief. Okay? So that, that's basically ethics. So ethics are very broad. As I mentioned, the, the Western also, have their own ethics. Um, so how what does ethics uh, depends on, right? So there are many things that will give out your ethics. For example, some people, uh, you know, even your, your behavior also part of your ethics, how you speak to people, how you walk in front of people, also, also part of the ethics. Um, what is this term related to ethics? Integrity, respect. So they are, when you talk about ethics, it's very important to everybody in the world to have ethics. Otherwise, this world will be, will, will be chaos. Can you imagine if you cannot trust anyone? There's no ethics. Yeah? People, that, that person keep on lying. Even to the non-Muslim or anywhere, nobody, nobody, fitrah as a fitrah, like anybody who lies. So, uh, so ethics govern what, is, what we're supposed to do, what's the right thing and what the wrong thing including uh, integrity and respect. So uh, I, will, I will leave this for you to read. So there are many slides that you are all smart students, you can read and you can un try to, you can understand. If you don't understand, you can come back to me. Uh, so we have including in, in ethics is integrity. Integrity is very, very important. So you will see later in our topic later, we have, we will share with you problems of integrity. So in, even in the telegram, I also put some, you know, um, issues, current issues. The one I just sent today was the, the one in Jordan, right? Uh, that where <clears throat> people died because not enough oxygen. 
and we have problem of integrity there. Is there any problem of integrity? For example, including in the integrity is corruption. Corruption is a problem where you don't have integrity. So, um, so if you're not sincere also, you have a problem of integrity. For example, you cheat in the exam. You don't have integrity. You don't want to deal with people without integrity. You keep on cheating. You go to their shop. In Islam, integrity is very important. You know, there's an ayah saying that when you when you sell something, make sure you the balance of selling is make, make sure it's it's you know you give the right amount that you are buying or selling, right? Uh, so so integrity is vital. So you as an a student, your integrity includes that you uh, what you call it, you don't cheat, you do everything on your own and you being honest and sincere. Uh, and you are not corrupt, so you don't do bribery, I guess. Okay, integrity, respect, also part of ethics. You need to be uh, respectful. So, how do you be respectful? There are here some examples that you can read. Including being respect is you need to be patient uh, while people talking. So, you have, you go to a... Somebody is coming to you for a problem as an engineer, right? The, the customer comes to you to tell you, oh, the problem is this product. I buy your product, but your product is like, you know, slow, everything. So you listen carefully. You have respect to that person. Uh, politeness. Transparent, open, and honest communication. Also part of the respect. So you don't, you don't lie when you talk. Okay. Anybody want to say something? Three. Huh? It's three. Iqbal? Yes? It's already 3 p.m. It's already 3 o'clock? Yeah. Okay. I will take five more minutes. My example of value system. So thank you, Iqbal. I will, I will keep fast and then we'll look at the rubric. So you can read on this. So you can see uh, example of some example of value system. So what happens if your value system is not right? Uh, for example, if your value system, right? For example, you value, what, is, what do you value in life? I value family. For example, you say you value your family. Some people value power. Some uh, you value, you know, uh, status. For example, I want to get a person first class degree, I want to get a CGPA of, I cannot, I must make sure my CGPA is less, a, a more than 3.5. That's your value, right? You value that. But in the end, would you do everything for it? For example, do, would you cheat in your exam to in order for you to get 3.5? Is that right? Because what it depends on what you value. People, you know, when people steal, or become a thief. They have their own value system. Everybody has their own value system, whether the value system is right or wrong. So our value system will be based on what? What should be our value system based on? It's on the Quran and Sunnah. Yeah, so it should be in Quran and Sunnah. But then, you know, I ask, I am student, uh, I am student, they always say like that. Then I will ask, well, can you tell me in the Quran, what does it say? Where does it say this? Where is the Sunnah say this? You cannot answer. So, you know, that's why brothers and sisters, when you say Quran and Sunnah, it's about Islam. We need to have knowledge. When we say that our values are based on Islam, we need to know what Islam says. We need to go and learn what Islam says about certain things. You don't just like, you know, um, assume. There are many people who assume, especially I don't know. I am I I need I'm bashing. I am student. Uh, um, you think that you know everything, madam. I grad I am good. You know, madam. I graduated from I I U M. I mean, I went to Usrah. This you know, study circle, Islamic worldview. So what else do I know? You know, this is the this is the wrong, wrong attitude. Uh, in Islam, we all, as a Muslim, we always learn until we die. There's always knowledge of Islam that we don't know. So never feel enough. Never feel enough. Because I don't know, this is what I see from the, I don't know why, when I see many students, you know, they still, 
enough enough lah. I don't need to go for the Islamic not uh, Islamic courses anymore. I don't need to go to Islamic talks anymore. I don't need to go to any extra usrah anymore because I'm good. Sometimes and then when I when I talk to this person and the student, when I say they good, I will ask about sirah, a bit of story of the sirah. He will not know about sirah of the Prophet Muhammad SAW or the Sahaba or the previous prophets. Then how can you say you know everything? So we will never know everything. We need to always seek knowledge, especially the knowledge of Islam, because that will help us in the day of judgment. Okay, so um, we stop there on the ethics and our responsibility as a Khalifa. Uh, I would like to go through the the project. Everybody got a, pro, uh, a title already confirmed with me? Everybody? Yes. Anybody doesn't have a confirmed title with me? Please, uh, please, uh, you know, please, Baswara, please say something now. Uh. I'm still there. Confirm. Yeah. Confirm so why not confirm yet? We will confirm. Mm. We we are still in discussion. You are still in discussion. Can you make it faster? So, I will give the deadline of the proposal this Friday. Okay, you need to, you need to, and I understand if you, you know, if you give you are if you confirm the title late with me your proposal will be very bad. This my, from my experience. The student do last minute thing, everything will be bad. You get very low mark. Do not blame me, okay? If you get a low mark, do not blame me. I keep on saying to you, you need to do it fast. So, um, and, and everybody, member of the group should contribute in uh, securing the title and find alternative and doing the proposal. Leaders, so, some of you are being appointed as leaders of a group, right? Leaders, if anybody, I'm, I'm, give, I'm giving you amanah, right? So as a khalifa, uh, we are still given an amanah. Now I'm giving you amanah as a leader now. Uh, my amanah to all of you leaders, if, if your members of the group are not participating, are not giving proactive uh, solution or contribution, your amanah is to report to me directly as soon as possible. Miss one meeting, report. Miss two meeting, report. I want you to record. I want the leader, please record. Because we are doing engineering ethics. If the person is missing any meeting or doesn't, uh, doesn't contribute, record it and let me know. And I will deal with it. Okay? If you don't do that, leaders, if, you do, and if I found out, right? The leaders are not doing the job. I will, I will remove you from the group. Anybody who are not doing the job, I will, re I can remove you from the group. So what happens if you, uh, I, what happens if you being removed from a group? Make a new project. Do, do it on your own, if you can do it, or change another section. Okay, you know why? Because I found out from previous semesters. Sometimes the leaders are not doing properly the job. So how do I know when one of the members go directly to me? So members, you, you also have the rights. If the leaders are not doing the job properly, inform me. We can sack the leader. So this is about responsibility, brothers and sisters. Uh, leader, you are being appointed for a reason. You are supposed to make sure everything's smooth. And you are, you are reporting to me. So you need to inform me if any of your group members are not doing well the, the, in the project. If you don't do that, Allah will ask you, if I, even if I don't catch you, right? I will catch you in the day of judgment. Although you're already 60, 70 years old at that time, I don't care. You know, in day of judgment, I will, get, I will take all your reward. If you don't do your job. So please, if your members are not doing, are not participating, are not contributing, are quiet, let me know. So I will deal with that person and I will ask you if the person still wants to take this course or no. Okay. And you can also, uh, vice versa, the leaders can be, can inform me, the members also can inform me if the leaders are not doing the job properly. Okay. So, so because even I don't care where you are, if you're in another country, you still need to contribute. 
Okay, there are many ways to 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 communicate your idea. Hmm. Now, uh, I want to share you the rubric. 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 Um. Presentation of this one. Okay, let me open this. So you can this is in the Google Classroom. Uh, you can get it there. Okay, so the template. Have you all looked at the template of the proposal? Yes, we do. Okay, good. Do you have any question on the template? No. So all happy. Okay, brothers and sisters, this is the new, um, uh, what do you call it, rubric for the uh, proposal. Okay, so how I'm going to mark your proposal. Whenever there's a project, you the, the smartest thing to do in any project, IDP, FYP, whatever it is, right? You always look at the rubric. Why? Because the, the assessor, the examiner, which is me, will, will mark whatever you do based on the rubric. So if you cover everything in the rubric, you shouldn't get low marks, right? So number, uh, so you can see this. So there are one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, six points here, uh, which you need to make sure that you cover. Number one is the introduction of background. You must consider contem contemporary issues and responsibilities relevant to engineering practices. So whatever topic that you do, uh, which I already, the one I already, make sure you, the way you write it in your proposal must be on contemporary issues. Okay, you cannot use issues like back in, you know, 1997 or something like that. So you, you need to give uh, uh, things that are related. And if you, and then after you look at this item, you look at the uh, scores. So you should, you should aim for this one. Don't aim for this one, unacceptable, right? So, Outstanding will be basic purpose of the proposed project is introduced and um, other genie, the grammar is not right. And background clearly stated and supported with evidences, right? So you need to bring evidence if you want to get eight to nine, uh, eight to 10. So it means that you need to give from references. Evidences, it means the references. No reference, you get six to eight. It's clear, but no reference. But it's clear and references. So you get eight to nine, eight to 10, 10. So make sure it must have contemporary and responsibility, uh, showing that contemporary issues with responsibility relevant to engineering practices. Number two, setting the objectives or target. So this is 20%. Okay, 0.2 means 20% of the mark of the proposal. 10% will go for setting the objectives, targets for the project to be executed. The objectives, of your proposal must be um, clear and strongly linked to the issues at hand, which is issue over here. So here you should put the problem statement. So the objective should be able, should go directly. How we're we going to solve it? And objective should be smart. Do you know what smart means? S M A R T. Specific. Anybody knows? smart okay i want you to google not everything that i have to go and find smart objective what does it mean okay even for your fip your idp whatever it is if it's an objective it must be smart so go and google what is smart objective smart objective s stands for specific and measurable a so go and find a r t so your objective should cover the smart elements in order for you to get high marks okay it cannot be like vague specific means it cannot be vague okay number three project planning which includes scope risk benefits of the proposed project including safety health and legal issues so this is a lot 30 percent three zero so you need to uh, in your project planning make sure you have included the scope and benefit including the safety how about the same? Did you cover the safety issue in, inside your, what do you call it, in your project? The health 
the healthy safety and health issues and also the is there any legal issues right so you need to also uh, so you need to think about the scope and risk and benefit okay and then societal impact this is very important 20% Maybe I should make this 20 and this 30, depends. I will maybe change later. So your project should be should have societal impact. So let's look at this. Proposed project show wide range of original thought of solving the societal problem. So you need to show that you are actually solving that society problem. Okay, you cannot, that's why I keep on saying some of you want to do a, a project which is like only benefit three or four people. That is not a society. So it, then you get very low marks here. Lah. Okay. And then cost consideration. Make sure you in the proposal, you have cost consideration. A realistic estimate of the project cost includes potential funding sources and allows for contingencies. So you should think about contingencies also uh, when you um, write on the cost. And finally, presentation or organization format 10%. Make sure. The proposal looks professional. It doesn't like cut and paste here. The grammar is everywhere. There's no formatting. Then you will lose marks here. Okay. Then that's 100% of the proposal. Any question? I do. I have a question. Yes. So for the objective and for the outcome, uh, do we need to do it in bullet form or do we need to explain it further? Objectives normally in numbers. One, two, three. Do not so go how more than the outcome. Uh, outcome. Outcome. Outcome up to you. Outcome we can put in the numbers or you want to put a paragraph karangan ke to pulang. So but the objective must be one, two, three, and not not more than three. If more than three, it means that it's not already uh, specific. Uh, okay. So maximum three of the objective make. And the also, you need to go and find how how do you write a good objective. There's a video on that, a lot of articles on how you to write on good objectives. Should be smart, okay? So a lot of marks will be there as well. Any more question? So let's make the deadline. Ah. I want to like let's make the deadline for all your ni. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me share my screen. Okay, you can see my screen, right? Yes? Yes, yes or no? Yes, I do. Yes. Any deadline? Number one, proposal deadline. Proposal deadline will be this Friday. What's the date? Anybody can check for me, please? 19. Huh? 19. 19? 19th of March 2021 and then uh, then you will have then you will do your project then the the portfolio deadline then you have your presentation presentation do you, do you have anybody have a like what you call it um Presentation uh, should be in, uh, the deadline will be week 14. I will give you the date later. Uh, portfolio will be a week before, week 13. Should we make it earlier or no? Or it's okay like this. Then on top of that, you will have assignment. Assignment. So you have two assignment and case one case study. Assignment one, assignment two, and then three case study. Mm. 
on this uh, on the case study uh, i will give the deadline later but for assignment 1 i will give you assignment 1 on thursday and i will give 2 weeks for you to submit to deadline so when's the 2 weeks after thursday anybody can check can can you give me a date uh, the date uh, for 2 weeks after this thursday April. First April. Okay. okay, so this Thursday, inshallah, remind me to give your first assignment. So these two assignments, so this, this will be 40%, right, of everything. And this will be 30%. So this will be this, this, uh, this will be 15% each. So it will be total of 30%. So that's the mark for your... So this the the carry mark is below here. Below, below here is your carry mark. And here is the final. If you if you fail your, your final project, you fail the whole course. Okay, brothers and sisters, if you will fail your project, although you get here a lot, you will still fail everything. This That's the, the, the requirement of the kuliah. So make sure you pass your project okay any question yeah madam how many pages should the proposal be how many do you want to make hmm? how not many sure. do you want not sure 20 page 50 page 100 page oh. tell me the rest of you, how many pages you want to do? Let's negotiate. One thing about being an engineer, you need to know how to negotiate. No specification. Cannot in life there's specification. But you cannot just give me two lines of you know two lines of proposal. You cannot. You can. Maybe. You feel lah. Uh. Maybe maximum ten or fifteen page. Okay, maximum fifteen page. Minimum. Five pages. Five. Three pages. Huh? Five, 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 five. I think five is enough. Brothers and sisters, we engineers, uh, you know, we don't write. I know you don't like to write a lot. I also don't like to read a lot <laughs> of your whatever you wrote. Mm. So I would say up to you, uh, I think minimum should be two to three page only. Okay. So if you can, can write everything clearly with the, you know, everything clear in three pages, great. You don't need to give me 15 pages. Okay, but make sure it's concise and you know everything of the issues are covered there. You put everything in the references, pictures, whatever important, news clip, newspaper, whatever, to show that it's actually important. You need to prove to me that your prob your project is important to the society and it will benefit the society. If you can do that, then you will pass your proposal. Lah. But if I read that, I am not clear what you're going to do. Your methodology is not clear. Nothing is clear. Then you will have a problem. Big problem. Okay. Any more question? 322. No? Great. So uh, so I will give you I will give you the link to submit the proposal soon. Those who haven't uh, get a, a project which is endorsed, you need to do that as soon as possible. Okay. Otherwise, you'll be in trouble. Okay, I think that's all for today. Can we have...